Fitzgerald's oh, from Fitzgerald. Okay. Uh, the So yeah, yeah. Thank you for the wonderful presentations. I it's fascinating. But something I just want to make you aware of is that uh, we have a blockchain for construction papers library that is freely available to everyone who wants to use it. It's this is managing Zotero, which is a reference management online software. Just let me know or have a look at the website, and you can access. I think we believe we have a couple of thousand papers there. Yeah, cheers. Hi, both. Um, thanks for the great presentations. I have a question. How do we practically get people to implement blockchain in the construction industry? Yes, yeah, sure. Um, thanks, Yuri, to ask me to go first. But uh, it's blank in my head. But I would say stick to this. Uh, what, what I found out from, from the research here is really, I mean, try to start with BIM or something people are familiar with. Um, there was a saying, I'm not saying it's within, let's say the organization work for now, but there was a saying that there, there was good strategy to picking the lower hanging fruit. Start from there. Um, and so that people be able to understand at the basic level, what its implication would be, uh, something that they're familiar with, uh, start from there. I'm not sure if I understand your, oh, sorry, answer question completely, but that's my two cents. Um, so I would start by focusing on different case studies and different um, smaller collaborations, because again, right now, if you were trying to launch something and said we're doing blockchain for construction, you're gonna get a lot of pushback from industry just because they don't trust the word blockchain. And so what they do trust, again, is having things work for them and having their data you know, fully uh, secure, having items be fully transparent. And so in other industries that I've noticed is if you kind of, and you kind of have to like sneak in around the door, um, but if you do different smaller projects in collaboration and then you show those results to different people in industry, that's how you kind of get more buy-in from there of just like baby stepping it in versus just trying to come at them really hard and aggressive, particularly on the viewpoint of how the average person thinks about blockchain. Okay, thanks. So any further questions from the audience? So uh, actually, if no, uh, uh, as MC, I have a question for you. <laughs> okay. So uh, since uh, Professor Yura, you're from the industry, so may I know what the most challenge of implementing blockchain in this industry or more directly how can we convince the customer or government or university to pay for this to pay for using the blockchain <laughs> how to get the government to pay for it yeah. it's so um this is one thing i've noticed so again i so i live in boston i'm i have a very u.s centric approach to things and my usual conversation with startups is get money from vcs we don't necessarily, and again, it's probably just how, how a lot of the tech world approaches things, is working with the government is not a thing we do um, because the US government is, is slow and they're old. And like, why would you waste your time chatting with the US government when you could go to VCs and get money or from industry? And so um, that is not a question I'm very good at or adaptable because I would just say, go talk to VCs. I know that's not necessarily uh, an option in a lot of other areas, but in the US, it very much is. Mm -hmm. So are there any options from the business perspective? Uh, so question, same question for Sunny. Yeah, I, I would say, um, actually, I, I just for the sake of a healthy argument, I would say maybe, maybe in certain country, it's the government, right? Um, um, had this kind of honor to to speak with uh, to visit um, the institute that we had yesterday in West Kowloon to see what Hong Kong has been implementing um, and think about Singapore right um, that they had a huge push in terms of rolling out BIM I'm not surprised they would do the similar things for blockchain or other technology right and there was another paper that I wrote and pretty happy to later on share is on macroeconomics um, where we dive into at least myself on the paper analyze something like how korea 
I was able to using technology, building technology to actually help on lowering or at least moderating the uh, housing supply to build things fast. But much of that during the research I did is that they have a government um, institute to foster research and adoption of technology and construction, but not so much, hand, uh, maybe to some extent, handing out money. Like um, maybe that, that part, I feel like I answer your question. Yeah, yes. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for your good answer. So if, okay, Professor Lu. Wilson Lu from uh, Hong Kong University. So instead of asking a broad question, so why uh, blockchain is difficult to be implemented in the construction industry. So I'm thinking to link that difficulty with the industry's characteristics, for example, the project-based organization, and also the fragment, uh, fragmentation of the industry. So I wonder if the two speakers have some thoughts about the characteristics of the construction industry and the link to the the blockchain implementation. Sure. Um, well, so, and I, I, I think this we had this conversation a little bit yesterday too. And so, um, so yes, there's a lot of fragmentation within in construction. That's, I mean, again, listening to like every single talk from Autodesk. That's all they they talk about on that side of it is again their their software solution of how to make construction less like fragmented. The bigger item behind that is just how small the margins are in the construction space. And so other industries like fashion, um, like even the food supply, they've got greater margins. And so they have more options to spend money and to test out different implications because they don't need it to work directly. They can test it out, see if it works. Maybe it works for, from a um, public perspective. Maybe it doesn't, it doesn't quite matter, but they've got money to do that. And the construction space or inspection space, a lot of companies are very risk averse because they can't afford to like test out things. They can't afford to be on the leading edge. And so, you know, uh, unless something's already tested, it's gonna be difficult to convince somebody who's already making you know, one to 2% that they should spend that money to maybe do something that doesn't work. Yeah, and I, in this case, I agree 100%. I can't really make a counter argument on that. It's like, <laughs> and, and, and the reason being is that um, one of the early exper experience of my teaching gig is I was teaching in Flushing, New York. If anybody know that part of the, the metropolitan area is full of ethnic group like us, Chinese immigrants, um, and speaking of fragmentation of the construction industry is huge because in that case it was based on or which city or village you move from and you make a construction firm of your own and start building. In that case, what the implication is when they actually look for technology and upgrade their skills, that's very interesting because you will have firms struggling to rationalize and whom to, to, to do those kind of, uh, you know, training sessions and 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 from that experience and aspect i would say where the government or some sort of um, you know i would say inter-organizational organization I, I, I can't really find a word to to subsidize the training that would be awesome will help those firms to upgrade their skill because like you said it's fragmented if they're fragmented there has to be some association to step in to help them, um, but yeah, that's where I, my, my two cents for with the little Chinatown connection over there. <laughs> okay, thanks for the uh, good answers. So uh, last one more question. Last one more question. Okay, so for some wells, last one, okay. Oh, oh you have Mac here, okay. So um, coming back to the previous discussion we had uh, about integration of uh, like how to make industry, you know, uh, more into blockchain and how to make blockchain getting more adopted in the industry. I mean, uh, is, is there a possibility that uh, we could start with the tools that the industry really likes and is really, you know, uh, is really working on them? And then we look into the problems that the industry is facing with respect to those tools. And then we slowly, you know, uh, move in with blockchain saying that, okay, so 
you know, there, there is a security issue here or there is a transparency issue here or uh, uh, so blockchain could help solve that. Uh, so instead of going head on with, uh, you know, proposing blockchain as a solution, it could be more of as a uh, as an accessory or as a as a supporting uh, technology to the existing technologies to start with, I mean. So you, you've hit on something that's really important and that um, and I, this comes up with a lot of startups that I work with who um, come from developers or, or other very technical individuals and that they are have a solution in search for a problem. And so you've hit it within your question is that you should first start with the problem. And so that's what the customer wants. Customer has a problem, you have a solution, so solve that problem. They don't care how you solve it as long as it works. But if you come at them and say, I have the solution, give me a problem that I can solve with this, and they're gonna go, no, I don't want this. So yes. Um, on that, thanks Thanks for a great question. Actually, uh, there, there are many sub questions within it, but I would say just pick on one thing that you said about tools. <laughs> and Yuri probably doesn't want me to keep going on that direction. It, tools like we are, like and not like Revit is one of the common two that we use in uh, for BIM right for collaboration and and um, and just perhaps from where I can see um, from a BIM manager's desk um, if there is some more integration again um, with with help of Autodesk or some other companies around Autodesk partnership we'll be able to, to um, to try out new things to in integrate blockchain um, to the, the current e or existing ecosystem, that would be awesome. And and I would say probably the it, like like you, one thing that I enjoy most, like and from uh, many among uh, many things, is you said um, to kind of cover up to put the technology as like make the technology as invisible as you can. That really helps the uh, adoption. Right, and that I would say I look look forward to <laughs> if there were new product coming from Autodesk um, or competitors, that would be awesome for the industry, for the adoption. Yeah. Okay, thanks. So we we'll have to uh, close this uh, panel discussion. So let's give a, another round of applause to the two speakers. Thank you. Okay, thanks, please.